The difference between somebody you admire, those you look up to, and you may just be in little things. In life, people are not successful because they are born into wealthy family, into successful family. Pay attention, please listen to me. Listen to me. Where you are born into may give you an advantage but will not guarantee your success. Advantage is just what it is, advantage. Advantage is not success. Just means you have a head start. Just means you have what it takes to be ahead of others. But having what it takes to be ahead of others does not necessarily mean you will remain ahead of others. Advantage can make you ahead at the beginning. But what will keep you ahead of others till the very end is no longer that advantage. Sincerely. Being in the, in the, living through the privilege of raising children is, 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 it makes me, I don't know how to talk about it. So this is, this is, has been the privilege of parents. But the point is that you may not be, may not be aware of it may not be aware of it. That people are born into families that do not give them everything they need does not mean they will fail in life. And that people are born into families that they have options in everything they need. Have options means for every one thing they need, they have like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to choose from. That in itself does not guarantee they will succeed in life. That's what I want you to hear. In, in studying very successful people on earth and those who start and eventually end great, maybe the wealth of the family, maybe the school they attended, all of this may be some accidental here and there, but the most crucial and determining factors sometimes boil down to attitude. The attitude of someone, just attitude. When you hear the word attitude, what comes to your mind? Anybody? Anybody, please? You can just when you hear the word attitude, what is it that jumps to your mind that you want to share with us? Attitude, attitude, attitude. Nobody, nobody, no volunteer. Uh, yeah, I see somebody there, but I want somebody here. Thank you. Let me exhaust here before I come there. Charity begins at home. Like attitude just i'm not putting you on the examination or whatever just share with us what comes to you okay attitude just you don't need to be correct I'm, i just want to know what comes to your mind what comes to your mind yeah so what is it that comes to your mind when you hear the word attitude personal Personal disposition in handling issues. Personal disposition in handling issues. That's great. Let me forget about issues. Let's talk about personal disposition. I think that's it. Anybody who wants to make further contribution? Now let okay, sir. Doctor. <laughs> Doctor Moore. That's a very serious thing. Sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. When we talk, talk of attitude, I see attitude as the the totality of somebody's behavior, his conduct, his reaction to issues. Wow. The behavior is there, his conduct in life, and the reaction to issues. Mm. Talks about his attitude, attitude in life. Thank you. Yeah. They talk about his attitude. I like that. Let me take you on that. His conduct, the behavior. Behavior. Yes reaction to issues, issues how to deal with issues they talk about his attitude, attitude but they are not the attitude <laughs> no i'm just by okay. your yes, by, yes. Yeah. they are not the attitude just that okay. they reveal they the, reveal attitude. the attitude. so yes. attitude reveals how people conduct themselves, conduct themselves. how they behave yes. how they relate with people how people relate with them how they come uh, come across so you see somebody you can see somebody who is not very who does not have enough money to even walk down the road or to get to the next spot 
But the way he behaves, conducts himself and talks and all of that, just looks like he's so wealthy. So that you feel insulted giving him money. That's not attitude, but it talks about, it reveals the attitude. It reveals the attitude. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Celebrate this. Let's keep the two individuals here. I love this. I love this. Acti you know, conduct, behavior, reaction, action, and re the reveal, the speak of the attitude. So, and attitude is underlying. So, attitude is at the, at the root. When you talk about attitude as disposition, I think that is closer to what attitude is in itself. He talks more about what, how we perceive and relate and are affected by other people's attitude. How our attitudes make themselves known in our behavior, in our reactions, in our interactions. And, and um, that's great. So I love the two. I love the two. So it helps me. But let's talk about attitude in terms of positioning. Positioning. Let's talk. Positioning. Positioning. Let's talk about attitude in terms of positioning. I have not forgotten. I, I really, I read over the years, not in recent time, over the years, I've read many of John C. Maxwell's book. I will call him one of my greatest mentors in life. He writes a book, he wrote a book about attitude. I don't know whether he has updated it or written somebody, a couple of books, but attitude always comes up in his writing one way or another. And I will not forget the first time I read through the, his book on attitude. I will not, I've read a couple of books on attitude, but his own is memorable. His own, you know, has this, this, this seal in my memory. Talking about for the first time flying with a pilot. I have shared this in service before a couple of times, especially in Ibom Hall. And I want every, especially every young person here to listen to what I'm going to share. By this, I'm not necessarily going to contradict any definition about attitude. But uh, uh, this demonstration will help you to understand any attitude, any definition um, about any, atti any definition of attitude that you will meet. Different, different ways of defining it. But let's do this demonstration. It talks about sitting in a cockpit with a pilot. A pilot friend told him well, let's join me let's 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 walk in the skies let's talk in the skies and so they got in and taxiing off and then taxiing and then taking off and then so when you fly you here will be cruising at the altitude you know altitude that's talking about the height 35,000 uh, feet above the sea levels and all of that that's altitude altitude is height but for an aeroplane to get to a particular altitude, altitude which is height, or to descend from a particular, a particular altitude which is height, the pilot has to set the attitude of the aeroplane. So when you hear a cliche, your attitude determines your altitude. Have you heard that before? I think this is the original context. If you are going to fly, you take off. And you set your attitude by your altitude. Okay, so let's imagine this is the taxiing. It is on a straight line. Then the lifting, taking off. From that moment, attitude begins to determine everything. And to continue this way, if you want to adjust and get higher, the attitude is adjusted. Can you see that? And when it reaches a cruising level, cruising level just stably moving on, and maybe there is an incoming, there is upcoming huge cloud wall that the pilot has to avoid by ascending. Sometimes you feel that kind of thing, a sudden thing in order to avoid the shaking and, the, and all of that. The only thing that the pilot will do will be to what? To tilt upward. 
the attitude so the nose so to say of the aircraft the nose that is the positioning if the nose of the aircraft is on horizontal straight line it means that flight it would take miracle for it to rise higher or come lower as long as it remains horizontal while cruising it is going to go there go that way forever or till something else happens to it to come down when it will say okay we are descending or uh, negotiating our initial descent into whether what airport or whatever that descent is brought about apart from other things maneuvering it will be the adjusting of the nose the positioning of the nose from being straight to tilting down depending on the distance and or at the distance and the height then the person will manipulate the nose but in terms of going up the positioning so to define from that demonstration did you get that demonstration to define attitude from that demonstration will simply be the positioning of your life the positioning especially most importantly the positioning of your mind of your heart the positioning of your mind your energy your spirit your that is what you call disposition that the first person who spoke talked about disposition so it is that positioning so the way you position your heart in relating with people would come across as either you are haughty you are saucy you are arrogant the way you position your heart position your mind position your energy position your your spirit position that positioning of the heart you see from the abundance of the heart the mouth does what so it is from the positioning of your heart for example i meet you come up sir I meet you and I'm meeting you for the first time. And the position of my heart is such that it's above you, making you little before me. And I talk to you like you are insignificant. That is arrogant. That's haughtiness. That's and it comes across. Say, what this guy does not even know. What, what is this? And you are trying to understand. So there are some people by the time you are done talking to them, you feel little, feel dirty, you feel useless you feel worthless not because there was any issue you were trying to deal with maybe you didn't do well or anything that you feel bad about it just meeting them just meeting them the 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 the, the way they position their mind the way regarding because attitude is positioning positioning of heart and mind regarding others regarding issues because every position is in relation to other things. Am I communicating? Now, let's go back. Stay there, sir. Let's go back to the aircraft. The aircraft position itself in relation to either the height or going down. So, the way you position your mind and your heart regarding others. This is called attitude. The way you position your mind, your heart, your energy, your spirit regarding issues. There is a problem. You face challenges. There are issues. Maybe in marriage. Maybe whatever. The way you position your mind will determine whether that issue will be resolved positively. And you learning from it. The way you position, the way you position your heart, your mind towards a teacher... A teacher comes into the classroom and for you in your mind is too little to teach you he does not know enough to teach you that is already the positioning of your heart of your mind regarding the teacher let's leave the teacher you have issues with mathematics is about attitude the positioning of your heart of your mind towards mathematics if the best mathematician should come into class 
the positioning of your heart and your mind, your spirit, your everything about you has already made you off. So no matter what somebody is doing, you cannot pre- you cannot you cannot prosper from it because if you position yourself up, you're gonna go up. If you position yourself down, you're gonna go down. Nothing is gonna help you. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Did you hear what I just said? So it is not others who bring us down, it's the our positioning. The position of our heart, of our mind towards others and what they do to us. That is what either brings us down or what lifts us up. So, people have used people's, people's insult to rise and become extraordinarily excellent. A teacher told, telling you you will never be anything useful. A boss telling you you are hopeless and useless. Even a minister telling you, I'm not seeing you. And um, I don't think God has any plan for you. Hearing those things from people who matter, including your father and your mother, it is already done. It is the positioning of your mind, your heart, in favor of what they say that will bring you down. What people say can help to adjust the positioning of your heart in such a high way. Oh, is that what you see that I will not do well? Let me adjust. Brak, brak. So instead of this way, watch me. <laughs> Ten years later, you meet somebody and somebody tells you, does not know you get it. Hey, hello, it is me. He said, who are you? Um, the one that was not supposed to ever do well. Be seated. I have given, I've talked about, sorry. This is not the preaching of the day, and Dome. This is what happens to me every day. You know, most, you are mostly young. And so when I come, I have a burden. I just came and stood here and saw the way people walk to church. It made nonsense of the preaching. Just made nonsense of the preaching. Saw people, somebody already late. You know, by the time I come out here, it's 8 o'clock. The service is one hour in. And somebody's coming one hour in into the presence of God, and he's walking like he's inspecting the guard of honor, not in, in not any guard of honor that determines or that expects him to even be serious. I don't understand it. Just look like the whole world waits for that person that the son cannot move to the next degree until he walks past. That means everything in life waits for him. Everything. He walks like there is nothing at stake. He walks like he's the God we come to worship or she is the God that we, that without her the sun will no longer shine. In the heat of the sun. The so everything revolves around me. So I walk like I'm already done. Perfect. I don't need you to give me job. I am the owner of all the jobs in the world. I don't need the next promotion. I am the top the top most top personality of the world i am done i'm finished i'm trying to sign out of life i just let me come to church and would see the useless poor people with a useless poor god who has nothing to offer them to tell them hello this is how to make it i'm dying tomorrow but before i die tomorrow i've been completed and accomplished everything in life i just came to sign up and to tell you wake up and don't depend on any useless god that cannot help you hello i came as i saw that so I just feel like, so what are you going to preach now? So what jumps at me is the positioning. Your feet will not take you where your attitude will not determine. In those days that I used to do all, my, all the shopping by myself. <laughs> I do, I don't, not because of anything of importance. At least people have to go to supermarket, pick up things. But going to shop, going to do anything. I walk into a shop. Your attitude in the shop has to determine whether I will spend one naira with you. I will not buy, will not give my one cover to somebody in business who does not deserve it. It has been a law governing my life. I will never give one cobble in business those who do crafts whatever it is that you do i watch you for the first time that you do it after that if you have been already engaged and money spent 
It is how you do it that will determine whether I will live or refer to you. There's a young man who does most of our wood stuffs, a carpenter. Francis, had, Francis is such a great guy. Great guy. He has had to talk me, talk me out of it. He said, you know, because it comes without energy, without hunger and all of it. But he's doing better now. <laughs> I said, don't, I don't want to see his face. Don't, I don't want to see his face. I walk into a shop and the way you attend to me, the way, you, because like you go into a shop and you see some very beautiful ladies who earn 15,000 naira in that shop. 15,000. I mean like 15,000 naira. Do you know what 15,000 naira is? Have you counted 50,000 naira? Then in that shop, you stand there two minutes, they don't honor you enough to look at you in the eyes. I'm not talking about greeting, to acknowledge that you have come. They are so busy trying to show you they are beautiful. Or if it is a boy, they are trying to show you that they have beard and you don't have, and they have hair. Or some other stuff that's going on in their head. And they just, they just do it. And you have to beg them to attend to you. And as you are beg, beg them to attend to you, they raise their voice, lose, lose patience with you. If you tell, oh, bring this one. Mm, I didn't, don't, why don't you bring the other one? Say, please make up your mind. Don't waste my time this morning. Is it correct? <laughs> no, what I'm saying, have you ever, do you notice, do you know it happens? Yeah. So many people, you say you have business and you hand it into the hands of fools. And then you come and pray that witches are attacking you. You know, when we talk about witchcraft in this part of the world, witchcraft is so broad, including those who say they are attacked by witches. They are witches also. So at the end of it, it's difficult to know who is a witch or a witches. Or a witch. Which is female, right? <laughs> Winch. <laughs> okay. It's, it's crazy. So, I, I don't know. How, how can I come and talk about the resurrection to people? Who's pos the positioning of whose mind cannot rise? You know the resurrection is, ah, we rise. Praise God. He buried them. He said, rise, right? How do you rise? What's the beginning in rising? There are few things involved in rising the power to lift yourself but if it is all about lifting yourself you can run and meet a wall and the wall will you hit the wall and the wall will not suffer and you will die depending on the speed so some people are very powerful but they don't ever rise up because they cannot position their minds up that's why you see the most powerful people in your neighborhood may be drug pushers You want to test that they are powerful people try them in a fight because they are daily exercising the same weight the same strength with which they carry weight effortly onto their trucks if they carry you you will just be one of the backs they have carried and because they carry you in anger anger that has been piled up over the years because they have not been able to rise and i'm not sure you will like this spirit so sir no matter how powerful you are don't try a truck pusher or somebody who uses his way his strength to earn a daily living sweating so strength does not strength alone does not take you up strength takes the aircraft up but that's not all the adjusting of the positioning of the nose so as it the taxi runs it begin you know if you have ever watched even if you don't bought a flight it starts by just moving gently and then it moves and then it moves and then it moves if he uses just that is called power that's called strength if all the aircraft pilot does is to add more strength generate more power onto the aircraft and it goes nowhere it will be off the runway and into the woods and people are going to die so many people have been killed by their power their power could be charisma their gifts means they can do things they live things they do things but they do things the same way for 20 years they have not been able to rise because of their attitude the dispositioning of their heart there are some people who meet you the way your mind is positioned they wish that you don't ever rise absolutely they wait after everything all they can wish is that this person should not rise 
And there are people who meet you because of the positioning of your mind. The position of your mind is so upward, it's so up-oriented that even somebody who has never helped anybody on earth will look at you the way you do it. Will say to themselves, I'm not in the habit of paying attention to this kind of thing, but tell me what's your name? Who are you? Because it's like your mind is so positioned up, but you are running on the ground. I don't usually help people, but I cannot avoid helping you. And there is how your mind goes down, and you are so intelligent, you are so gifted, and somebody will feel guilty thinking of lifting you. Just lifting you will be a waste of time. If you take somebody whose mind is positioned downward, take that person 50 feet above the skies and leave the person is going to come down. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Tap somebody, say, did you hear that? <laughs> now, what family background does? What your connection does? What the, what the school you've been to and all the things you've learned, what they have done is that they lift you to a, pos a position, but they will drop you there. Now, what will happen is, either staying on call in the same level, or rising from that level, or coming down, will be determined by what? Attitude, the positioning of your mind, of your heart. The positioning of your spirit, your energy. The positioning of your life that makes you relate with the next level this way instead of this way. The next level is just one mile from now. You can reach one mile from this place down or up. Or you can reach on the same, the same level. That means... One year ago, you were this way. Everything has changed this year. The only thing that has not changed is that you have not left this way. You celebrated last birthday. Something has changed. You moved from one office to another. Something has changed. But all these things changing does not translate to you rising. The reason is the positioning. I usually tell people who work with me, at the pastoral level, those I have meeting with, if I am to wait for you in a meeting, you are a misfortune to me. And I don't know whether they ever know the gravity. Every time I have to wait, not even once, not one minute, not one minute that I wait for you as somebody working with me. I can't understand that I wait for you one minute. You break the greatest law. If every promotion in life depends on me, I will not promote you. I serve you. You are not the one serving me. I bow to you. I depend on you. You must be, I wait on God. I wait for God. There are people you meet in life. You go ahead and wait for them. So you know, working, some people say, my, in my office, my boss is so connected. My boss is closest to the president. My boss is this and that. My boss has access to, can recommend me. And I go to this place and I return from that place. But I don't understand why my boss has not. They say, no, it's not about your boss. It's that your mind, your heart, your spirit, your life is positioned in such a way that every law of lifting has been broken by your positioning. One of the things this morning that came to my mind, wanted to, I will ask those at least who are on stipend in Grace Family, if you don't pay tithe, you know me, I don't talk to you about tithe, right? I don't worry about tithe, but I worry. I worry. I worry, sincerely, I worry. Tithe is not tax. Nobody loves to pay tax. It's not free will giving. It's not giving a sacrifice. It's not giving in honor. It's not giving for a purpose. Um, I don't know. Generally, tax should help. Except tax in Nigeria. Because you know, let's not worry about Nigeria. Let's leave us. Let's leave Nigeria. Let's talk about us. So others, because I tithe. I was taught tithe by my, by my sister. 1992. No, 91. 1991. How many years ago? 1991. That's like 30, 33 years ago, right? 
that I paid my first tithe and my money was like 80 naira. 80 naira, 1990. The first thing I earned was either 60 or 80 naira. And my elder sister told me one thing. I was a Kali, a young Kali who just went. She had made Christ in deeper life. And I heard the word for the first time, tithe. She told me, your tithe is 10 out of 100. One out of 10. And it belongs to God. She didn't give much explanation. I did it. And one thing I understand from that moment till now, I entered into favor economy. So tithe is, is access to favor economy. If you don't give me freely, if you cannot give me freely, and it depends on me to give you, I will not give you freely, you will cry. There are things God gives us freely and that's all. But there are things he gives you freely. How you give yourself back to him freely determines whether you have the next one. How you give, even the same way with life, he gives you new life. How you give that new life back to him determines whether you spend the next life with him. <laughs> is it not true? Is, it, is there no heaven? Do you believe in heaven? A life of glory after now. It does not come automatically. God gives you a new life. How you give the new life back to him freely. In service, in consecration, in everything. Determines you spending eternity with him. And what God gives you in return is not the same level with you. So tithe can take away sickness from you. Take away things, hospital stuff and all of that. So this church tithes officially. does first fruit. Everything that comes the first first meeting of the year whatever comes goes leaves us we cannot use it to buy diesel or anything the same thing the church officially tithes i tithe in a tithes so i go home and give in a hundred naira before you will spend that money she will take 10 naira out and keeps it over and then sends it to whoever she we agree she should send it to so the domestic Whatever money enters a hand for the house is tithed. What, what the Holy Spirit brought to my spirit is that whoever works with me means from whatever God gives to us, we use it to support you as working full time with us. And I tithe and you refuse to tithe. It means one thing that will happen is that you will have a, you will give me a bad name because I'm not permitted. I relate with you based on how God sees you. I have worked with people that we will share favor during time like Christmas and whatever and until it is done before we remember one person. And it, was, it has been consistent. So every time we find out what is it about this person that in the time of help and the person is one of the closest people to us but on the day you are giving favor the person is absent in the lease and there is no the, every time we say oh take note of social so person but next time you'll forget one day i had to ask him sir do you give <laughs> i'm worried <laughs> hard work this person is so hard working i don't know what led me to this is about attitude attitude i have received i cannot the position of my heart is i don't want to lose what i have received that means I keep it this way. So if it, de it depends on God and everything, you will continue this way. So, if I don't preach anything today, the first thing you ask yourself, what is, your pos what is the position of your mind? The position of your mind makes somebody remember you. After somebody has encountered you, long after that somebody remembers you i wish i could see such a person why some people they can never marry they are so beautiful and they meet people everybody who marries somebody is either through one person or through personal contacts either somebody contacts you or somebody recommends you say i have seen somebody i would like you to talk to eventually becomes like whatever your first meeting with people your attitude do, does handshake with that person. And that handshake will determine whether the person marks you X for life, forever. So that when your name comes up, when your name comes up, what comes up in the mind of the person is what? An X. Means don't go forward. 
He said, my mother-in-law, from the day my mother-in-law met me, now I, I knew they didn't like me. So it's not now. From the first day she saw me, I, they look on her face. Who knows the positioning of your mind and your heart? This is where failure operates. This is where success operates. Please, give yourself a great gift. The gift of being aware is your mind, the positioning of your mind in support of failure or in support of success. At every point in time, the positioning of your mind and your heart is supporting something. Either supporting success or supporting failure. This is not what I wanted to preach about and it is so, it breaks me that I have to like set that aside. We'll still try to go back but that's what happened. The way you came to church this morning so say so much about you. The way you will walk into the office tomorrow, the way you drive like people who do Uber or whatever it is that it is. So you can pick somebody and somebody takes your number and recommends you for a company job. And many people, I have seen people who say, this car that I drive, I have a young man from, uh, it's from Anna, one of the places in Anna, Emmanuel. Well, in those other days, years back, used to be my contact person in Lagos. If I'm coming, I tell Emmanuel, I'm coming. Everything is shut down. Pick me at the airport. I no longer do that now. So Emmanuel drives a car he didn't have to buy. White people, he just, if you call him and say, will you be available for me today? He's been booked today. So you cannot call him in a week and get him. He has clients across Nigeria, including foreigners who come. His attitude, the boy from Anna, Emmanuel. He knows everywhere in Lagos, every taxi, person does that it's just that he's such a great sweet guy who makes you happy riding with him just a family from the next moment he's just so available to a fault he does not talk money first money comes last doesn't talk money first his interest is that I know. So the next time I went to Lagos, I saw a, a new worker. He said, Man, what happened? You bought a new worker. I said, Father, somebody just favored me. One of those I take around. So I'll call him now. Oh, I am busy today. One of my clients coming into the country and I'm booked the whole day. Oh, one of my clients traveling. So I am with him in Lagos the whole of today until I take him to the airport in the night. You don't take. It is attitude. While some people are waiting, some people are too busy. It's your attitude. Your attitude keeps you waiting. Your attitude keeps you busy. Can you rise? By the way, this is part of what Patrick inspired us. This is, this is one of the things when we talk about Patrick inspired. For those who already picked up from, these are some of the things we deal with. And have daily assignment, weekly assignment, and all of that. I think by this way, I'm ready to get the party inspired summary because by next month, I should. I want to pour my life in mentorship so that I don't want to come into this assembly and be talking about this because I know I'm talking to people. But it's costly though, so don't pick up from until you are ready. Because you are ready means you wait for me, I don't wait for you. I sack you anytime and every time. You must deserve my time. But here, come 10 p.m. After I'm done, church is open for you. But in part to inspire, it has to be by my rules. Such that after you've played with me for two months, three months, something has changed in you. And I charge nothing. I don't need anything from anybody. I came to give. When I die, I want to go back empty. There is hunger in me to change. I hate poverty. I hate bondage. I hate people suffering. I just hate it. Rise to your feet. Lift your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes to see what I am preparing for. What my life prepares me for. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Open my eyes to see what I have built upon my life. What I am responsible for. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Open my eyes to see 
the things I have brought upon myself and how I can change myself in Jesus name be seated let's talk about attitude in, if I don't end up preaching just know that there are some people that no matter how, how the message of today how I preach you will be useless to them because they are not yet ready can I tell you something attitude gratitude is grace attitude somebody can write that book it's the title of a book I've not yet started writing so somebody can start writing some people will not like to talk about that if I have not written it somebody if you are hearing me and you want to write it I will still write it one day and certainly will not be word for word so go ahead gratitude is what grace attitude now gratitude reveals the positioning of your heart regarding the next grace that's what gratitude does so somebody does not know your readiness for the next level somebody does not know your hunger for the next level but one of the things that will help somebody to know how hungry you are for the next level will be the level of your gratitude so if i give you one and you make a extraordinary show about one i feel i will blush i will i will be embarrassed i will like be flattered is it one that it is being celebrated this way let me give two let me live up to the expectation let me raise it to two <laughs> or if i give one and the positioning of the heart and the mind of that person is down like you insult me with that i don't this that's not what i deserve you gave me one like do i look like one before you that's the communication not acknowledging or saying a grudging angry and insulting thank you oh by the way i saw that one thank you <laughs> by that is by the way by the way means oh did you see one oh sorry i forgot to let you know <laughs> it means it's not important so it means the dispose the disposition the positioning of the heart is like this regarding one the communication is that the next one will be insulted don't release it this is why some people stay in this on the same level forever no promotion every time people are being recommended to go outside to go for uh, for, for studies to attend um, events that will add vast seminars training and all that every name that comes up in the office means there is favor upon it because you don't choose it it is chosen for you sometimes the people who have power to choose you your attitude daily fight them the last time anything came from them you they felt insulted the way you took it because for you it was down down means is that all some of you that you, you struggle in marriage that's all when I got married one of the first things I and Ian had to settle with is the ritual of gratitude we have it as a ritual a ritual how we end the day and how we hold ourselves accountable so I do something and you don't show gratitude I hold I, I say so 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 the, the first letter to tell me i have never known i have always thought i have been the, the most grateful person but we have to talk about the ritual and the process of showing gratitude gratitude is not what you feel in the heart gratitude is the expression of what you feel in the heart <laughs> he said but i'm grateful i don't know it the same way that i don't know what you think about me except when what you say about me consistently so these are the things that determine i came here what look took me to all of this has been the fact that that you are poor, born into a poor family does not mean that you will be poor that you are born into a wealthy family does not mean you will be wealthy 
Being small does not mean you will remain small. Starting big ahead does not mean you will be, will be, you will always be ahead. Attitude. So I pray for my children daily. I, I don't know how you do what you pray for your children. It's too deep and secret for me. And sacred in a way. Sacred. How I pray for my children. Because there are things I have come to learn. So I don't pray that they go to the best of the universities and study abroad. I don't pray this, that they, God will use them mightily or not. I am more interested in imputing in them the things that will support lifting. <laughs> because as for lifting, God will bring it. But the positioning of your heart will make you avoid a lifting. Those are the things that bother me, that I'm interested in. So every time I go to school, the teachers that bring my children as they are about living, I have to tell my children, say bye to your teacher. I will do that again on Monday, Tuesday, every day. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. So at the fourth birthday of my daughter, we did no cake. She had to give her best day cake as help to another. So we were, dri we were driving and she saw some children on the street without shoes. And she told me, Daddy, those children are without shoes. My next birthday, I want to use my cake to give them shoes. We're driving. She see those children without shoes. My next birthday, because the mother had told her, from four years old, your birthday cake has to bless another person. So it's no longer about giving you cake. It's about using the money of your cake to bless another person. So she understands it. So while she's still four, she's planning that at her fifth birthday, the project will be that I will give shoes to another person. It is it's not natural. It is imputed. It is imputed. These are the things that make people leaders. These are the things that make you can do all the anointing. And the disposition of the heart will be a fight forever. I pray wisdom upon you. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in any way I have been against my life, show me mercy. Come on, come on, come on. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In any way I have been my enemy, show me mercy. Say it again. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. In any way I have been the enemy of my life, show me mercy. In any way I am the reason of my struggling, please show me mercy. Just speak, just speak spontaneously over your life. How am I my how am I my problem and I didn't know? How have I been the reason of my pain and I don't know? How have I been the reason of my pain and I don't know? How have I been the reason of my sorrow and I don't know? How have I been the reason, the reason of my delay? And I don't know. How have I been the reason of my trouble? And I don't know. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated, be seated. Sincerely permit me that the message of today has been supplanted. Let's talk about, it. is this helping you? Yeah. I, I am worried as a pastor. Uh, can I tell you, I started off my life as a Catholic priest. My life generally was life of an evangelist. Carrying the good news, I go to a place, I love to travel. I love to, I love, you don't know me. I, I love to move. I just love to move. Naturally, that's how I grew up. I don't stay at home, I run around. So ministry for me was in Lagos today. 
and you move from Lagos to Abuja and you come back to your parish, one day, two days, you take off. I use generosity so people around me really love to support me. <laughs> I'm, receiving, I'm revealing my secret now. I, give, if I go there, they give me 100,000 naira. You don't depend on what. Whatever you receive when I was there, take it and I will add something. And some of these people are people who are struggling in their own places. So, so they are, every time I call, I am moving to, I am going to preach in social place. Somebody said there's no problem because when I'm blessed, the person is blessed. So I had no problem. I loved it. I didn't love to be a pastor. It's boring for me. But when I resigned, the issue of being a pastor confronted me. It means when I meet you, your life speaks to me and I'm responsible. A pastor is responsible. An evangelist comes to give and he walks away. A pastor will be responsible to keep it. It's a heavy thing to be a pastor. Please pray for pastors. When you go down, a pastor goes down. It breaks if it's truly a pastor. It's an it's a addition in the call for me to pastor people. But you know, do you know what I love about it? What excited me about it? The possibility of consistently hitting in a life like hammer and chisel. To chisel bam, and break and cause a statue out of a marble. That weekly, like today, I was so excited. I was excited about today to come and share something so excited when i have revelation it makes me mad like revelation i have for next sunday for the communion service that will start people have to start praying with that revelation today he's been with me as i prayed i'm so excited i feel like the communion service should be tomorrow because i want to change somebody's life i just want to that's the only prayer i pray so they are prayed for you release them from this release them i it bothers me it really bothers me i may not visit your house physically but every that's all i do about you but it also comes with such responsibility that over time you just see some people they are going nowhere and the day you hit them hard to adjust they adjust the church walk away the only thing that has not adjusted is everything that is against a person has not moved. The devil takes advantage of your disposition to keep you in bondage. Have you heard it? That a drunk is displaced drunkenness according to his original character. So a foolish person being drunk reveals the foolishness. Have you seen a foolish drunk? Normally in life is a fool. Drink reveals violence in a violent person. When, when someone who is very insolent is drunk or high, the person is so insolent. So the manifestation of drunkenness or highness is according to your kind. That's why God is interested in changing your kind first. And when we talk about changing our kind, sometimes we just think, we just talk spiritual, spiritual. Yes, that's the basis. There are so many born again that cannot, keep, cannot be promoted in their jobs because the disposition of their heart. I had to see a young lady in this church yesterday and I told her you should be ashamed of yourself. And I don't want to tell you why I said so. So that people will not try to look for that person. I looked at her. I've been watching her for a long time. She doesn't get involved in anything that adds value. She just said, the only time I have seen her excited is when she's doing a personal thing for herself. Any other thing does not excite her, she sits. And I just saw her yesterday and I pinned her down to that context. I was praying and moving, but I could, I could interrupt my prayer. You know, I'm praying in tongues like, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be, you should be ashamed of yourself. Man, they pro you <laughs> Sir, when it is important, I interrupt tongues to do it. Interrupt. How will you, how will you see death? And you are praying in tongues. Sir, deal with death and continue. Just he say, he say, you could have done this while not, not neglecting this. You speak in tongues and not neglect somebody's dying. And you are fasting and praying for the person to be blessed and lifted. But the attitude of the person is prison. Many of us are living in our personal prisons. Our attitudes put us in personal prison. 
Beautiful enough to go to bed with somebody but not good enough for the future. Attitude. Handsome enough that somebody sits with you and eats chicken. But don't, let's not talk a future. I'm not ready. I'm going to enter your ship. I know of a young woman that said, if all it takes in this world is to marry you, I will never marry you. Told the man. Why people are praying and fasting for people to marry them. Somebody saying, if all there is in this world is marrying you, I will never be a wife. I refuse to be a wife instead of marrying you. Sir, I just came this day. Let's just take this Bible thing and just put it aside. What is it that is standing against you? What is it? How you? So when you come to church, that is the way you go to the office. Oh, do you know? Okay, here we have been working because this place everywhere needs work. Everywhere you need to touch it. Painters. So they did came and painted today. They are coming back tomorrow. 11 a.m. is when they start. And in between that 11 a.m., they are just thing. They will stand and talk. Then 1 p.m., they go to eat. <laughs> And then come and spend some time and talk. Like people want two guys who, who mended the roof of a rest, a rest room when a palm tree fell on it a few weeks ago or like a month ago. And the place was so urgent. Rain was coming and all of that. These guys came late in the day and came and made noise and then went out to eat. Stayed long, came back. And they were not in a hurry. I broke my prayer again. I went. I was preparing for crusade in order, but I had to go. He said, bros, <laughs> when rain comes and meets this thing this way, the danger will be greater. Will you just do something? One looked at me like I've insulted him. The other one said, yes, sir. And they started working, but they worked like I was insulting them. Sir, I'm sure they are not married. All of them are between late 30s and 40. I am so sure. They are living with women they cannot afford to pay bright price for. I'm sure they have children that are responsibilities to the women, not them. Not, they don't look like they can pay anybody's will. They don't look like they want to finish this job to go and do another one. They are working like this is their, their, this is their gratuity. Their pension. That's, it's, it's still attitude. They position it. That is how you work. It means don't give me another job. That like this is the last job. I don't hope I will ever have another job. Do you, do you make dresses? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You make dresses. How did I know? Okay, you don't make dresses. Okay. But somebody makes your dress, right? And there are those who make like that. That like this is the last dress. So they do it, they make it forever. And they get angry with you that you are telling them I'm wearing on Sunday. Have you said it before? He said, Don't put pressure on me. You can come and take it, take it to another tailor. The person has retired and he's only 28. He's on retirement. The attitude means, may I never have another one. And may no valuable client come to me. I don't know where I'm communicating. He said, may you, the way I'm serving you, may you never tell any important person about me. May all those who know me be useless, those who cannot lift me. Those are kind of insult and they have no option because they don't have money to pay me so they beg me to make their dress and I keep their dresses for five years and they don't trouble me because it's for free. May you not introduce me to those that when they, I, I make a dress for them, they give me more money that can buy me the next machine, the next, the next equipment. Honey. It is your attitude. It's your attitude. That the way somebody serves you and say, ah, is this what you do? And you are in this kind of condition. And you tell somebody else who can pay bill, and somebody comes, looks at your shop. You say, no, you cannot be here. Come to the central area. Look for a shop. I will pay for you. It has changed many people's lives. I will send you on training. I will give you a professional upgrade. Attitude. Attitude. If I tell you, take, keep a journal and, or journaling, just keep writing daily on how you 
attend to what you are asked to do and your responsibilities i know you will not do it it will be too, too difficult for you but until you become aware it's part of what we do in party inspire self-awareness do you know how you walked from your house to where you boarded the vehicle can you track can you go back in time you are not aware how you walk are you aware the last thing you did before you went to bed yesterday so it begins with you don't know so instead of telling you write down daily track like you are going to work tomorrow you are going to office tomorrow you are going to make the next dress and all of that after i am done here you don't remember that is why nothing has changed you prophets most of you here prophets have given you words and if you were to be honest you would say all the words that have been given they are not that have not come to pass the word of a prophet does not promote people the word of a prophet opens the door for them if it is a true word but that door has to be passed through by you so prophecy does not prosper a fool prophecy does not prosper a lazy person and that is what we want here so when you come here your friends come with your friend but he does not have a gift of prophecy who told you you need a gift of prophecy you keep you need the gift of knowledge you need to know who you are going for so i don't pray for a gift you don't need the day you need prophecy i will give you a word what you need is somebody who will break you down and teach you very basic things in order for you to start life at basic level say basic many of you some people just feel like i wasted their whole money i'm not going to go insult the word of god today your attitude cannot accommodate it and i'm sorry for many of you are ready for this word majority i just came here just sorry next week is communion service and um communion service we are dealing with it's going to be a very power it's going to be a power ministry we have prayer belts sorry today this is how it was i'm doing the work of a pastor doing the work of a pastor i'm going to pray for you in a short while and we'll be done so next communion service is going to be 8 a.m we are trying because communion service is is a power place i'm going to get this woman to give her testimony about communion next communion service i have been after we changed the assemblies into two issue of having one service on a sunday has been troubling for me i want us to be consistent in time but the holy spirit reminded me a lot of people meet miracles an encounter in the communion that's what god has given us to serve here and so we have to crash we have to be able to crash time adjust to accommodate that so every first sunday we have one assembly and it's going to be eight that means those who come late on right at rising star service congratulations you but even if you make it 2 p.m people will come late so you already know right there are people that their own attitude favors lateness they are late in everything late in everything but praise god that is changing say that is changing oh that has changed that's changed. so next sunday but we are going to pray for the prayer belt sometimes they, my ministers come to talk about prayer belt and they do wonderful presentation but people don't understand pastorally god has constituted us into an army sorry i will soon pray for you i'm just going to give you information we are an army an army is works by discipline and training is a regimented life an army lives by regimentation it means things that should be done at the time they should be done regularly it, just you don't you don't break it so in grace family we have a covenant prayer belt from 12 midnight our conviction is that if you rise at night you will conquer during the day write it down if you rise and conquer at night you will rule during the day so from 12 midnight you have time to rise not just an individual you rise in connection with the 24 your own group 
But if you have not yet entered any group in Grace Family in connection with all the others who are rising, that means there's a covenant grace. Others are praying for you and you are praying for others. But the connection, that means if you want to pray one half just from 12 to 1, if that is your capacity, maybe 1 to 2 if that is when you rise, or 2 to 3, 3 to 4. So between 1 to 4, that is official time at the prayer belt. Try to fit in, try to fit in. And you pray for yourself, you pray. There is always a prayer direction that we have to keep us as a family. It doesn't stop you from having other times that you pray. But this is a cover. This is like family. This is like family. We are preparing for communion service on Sunday. The Holy Spirit put a burden in my spirit to prepare you for it. The theme for that communion is that if the stone could not stop him, no stone will stop me. That's it. That's what the Holy Spirit laid in my heart during the week. It became so strong. You see, when Jesus was buried, they placed a stone. And the Jews said, give us guards. And they put their seal. They secured the stone that the tomb will not be, no one will be able to enter. And the stone was very heavy. Their plan or their thinking was that Jesus would try to come out physically or people physically want to come and remove him. But that stone could not stop him from rising. So because we have been dealing with the resurrection, that's the last moment next Sunday. If the stone could not stop him, whatever stone that is standing in front of me, whatever stone that says I wouldn't rise, including your attitude. That's why today I came to tell you that there are witches and wizards that are not out there. Your attitude can be your greatest enemy. The way you relate with it. So what scripture are we using? Mark chapter 16 from verse 2 to 6. Mark chapter 16 from verse 2 to 6. If you can fast during the week, whatever you can do personally, please do it. Join the prayer belt. Awaken your spirit in the night. Create time in the night to wrestle with heaven. Jacob wrestled with the angel in the night and woke up in the, the following morning not as Jacob but as Israel. If you are in the habit of rising late and wrestling you will wake up into morning that has less interference. Night time is a time of concentration. Almost every cult initiation takes place at night. Witchcraft, they have their official meeting at night. Conspiracies for, for, to overthrow government. Conspiracies to stop you. Most nights, terrible things go on. Terrible things go on. Terrible things go on. So if you are in a habit of being comfortable in the night, sleeping back to back, that you, you go to bed in the night and struggle to wake up the following day, I know how your day will look like. You are going nowhere much. Even those who don't believe in God, those who walk by their strength, they know that you have to use the night to have advantage. You rest, but you create a window create so people have different rituals of making the night work for them so the prayer belt is making the night time serve your purpose by engaging in god and transforming darkness into night into light so for you in grace family that have not been engaging in the prayer belt maybe you didn't have understanding so the announcer don't talk about prayer belt again in the announcement in this one and that next one let me talk about it i'm doing the work of a pastor today I had a wonderful message for you, but the Holy Spirit said, be, just do a work of a pastor. Do family housekeeping. Just hold people together and give them a new mind. At least one second of it. So use that scripture, Mark 16 from verse 2. You will see women worrying about who will roll away the stone. 
So you could be asking, maybe you have been asking, maybe your children, maybe your marriage, your marriage you have not yet entered into. The, the business your life has not yet created is asking you who will roll away the stone so that you can marry me. Who will roll? Children are waiting for you spiritually. I'm waiting. Who will roll away the stone so that my daddy can come for me? Who will roll away the stone so that the business can take place and all of that? By the grace of God, the stone could not hold him. And we are trusting God that it will be encounter in the Holy Ghost by which your own stone, whatever it is currently, or in the past, or in the future, it will not hold you. Oh, I thought I was talking to people. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me just say, it, I mean, if the stone could not hold him and keep him, if the stone could not stop him, will it stop you? No. Your attitude. Your attitude. Now, the way you relate with this prayer information is also depending on the attitude. You can position your mind like, this doesn't matter. And that's what has been happening to you in church. Fast on Wednesday, fast on Monday, your, the positioning of your heart and your mind is like, this doesn't matter. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Heaven agrees. Another person will hear fast. Oh, I've been waiting for it. The mind is so up that this fast will lift me. Sincerely, the fast will lift you. So after I'm done prophesying, preaching, teaching, it is your spiritual attitude that will transfer it either into prosperity or into uselessness. I pray for you today. That from this moment, your attitude will not, no longer stand against you. I'm going to pray for you. I pray for you that you will be aware of your attitude. That's it. I'm asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, cause a young girl here, cause a young woman, cause a man here, cause a woman, Lord, cause a family. A husband a wife to be aware of the attitude that brings about their problem lord by this today's intervention this was not preaching the word that was meant for today has been set aside to deal with practical sin lord i'm doing this in the burden of a pastor and with the burden of the pastor Lord, whatever attitude that kept somebody away from promotion, let there be understanding. Let there be knowledge. Your word says that and you shall know the truth. Lord, what we don't know cannot help us. What we don't know, we cannot overcome. I'm asking in the name of Jesus Christ, cause somebody's spirit to know cause somebody's mind to know cause somebody's business to know in the name of jesus christ i'm praying okay be seated every one of you here please let me give you an assignment every one of you here that if you have a shop a business that somebody is taking care of anybody here that you have a business somebody else is taking care of please this week try and see Try and intentionally put mechanisms, structures, processes in place to see. Some of the prayers we pray, we don't need to pray them. My interest is that prioritize today, this from this week. Be interested in knowing, find out the attitude, set the person up. In case the person is also listening, don't if you know the person is listening don't do it like one week the next two three months set somebody up intentionally send somebody sponsored by you to go into that shop to go into that business and tell the person what to look out for find out what time does the person resume find out how does the person treat your clients the success of every business depends on the success of the client. That's it. 
business is about serving people it's not about making money you make money in business because you serve people well so a lot of people know business upside down if your interest in business is money you will fail you can make all the money but one day you will be poor certainly but if your interest in business is to serve people and add value in your service they will serve you and give you wealth the secret thing is very simple thing about business that most people do business do not understand please do this let me end with a story of patrick he came here during my the ordination of the first lady patrick and if i am he begs me to know when i'm coming to lagos he has a reservation for me marriott any day any time Marriott is one of the, <laughs> the best hospitality brands in the world. So if I tell him this morning, I am coming to Lagos this afternoon, he collapses everything to make sure from the airport I have the best service and I'm taken to the best place that is available. Last time I traveled to Lagos, somebody's business was crashed. Somebody could not travel to the east because somebody had to crash everything to save my coming to Laos. the person said oh the following day i'm not coming for you i said oh, there's no problem some other person will tell me the following day i saw the person early in the morning to take me to the what happened patrick said i should not travel i said patrick what happened he says you are too important for you to be treated carelessly so i told him to suspend his business until you leave Lagos. told me there are some of my people that can you know that it's not everybody i will send to come and pick you and the vehicle that came to pick me and everything about it let me tell you the beginning of that relationship that's where i end today i'm sorry should i tell you i walked into a shop in vi he, he brings things from italy so when i wear suit and all those stuffs and stuffs and you know some of the things i've used for dedication Within one week, I will say we need this, and it will call Italy, and it will be brought in and on time from Italy for me to wear. That's the relationship. It has the relationship is over how many years now? Maybe about 13, 14 years. 13, 14 years relationship. I walked to a shop to a shop one day, it's old shop in VI, to pick up stuffs. I looked at this, I looked at that, I looked at that. And he was sitting in that shop with his friend. He clothes people like Amechi when they were in government. People like Davido in the secular world, they buy things from him. He has related with people in that. I don't want to mention them, their names and all of that. High profile people in business and people like Kanu Wang who have been in his circle for years. He relates with people. So when I walked into his shop, I didn't look like any of those people. So he didn't, he didn't look at me. He was busy talking to another friend. And I tried picking this. And I, I draw his attention. I say, young man, you don't know who comes into your shop. You kill your future when you treat somebody you have never met like you have ever met that person. Have you met me before? Do you know me? He woke up. I taught him. I sat him down and taught him for a few moments. Say the next person that will come through this door may be the person your life has been waiting for. And you don't know that person until you take care of that person. That's what changed his life. From that day, he never stopped following me. Now I can call him family and friend. He had to beg for it. He had to run. You can, he could call me hundred times. I will not pick his call. Because that day, I ended up picking up things he didn't believe. The person who walked in, I was a Catholic priest. The person who walked in the way I walked in, he didn't believe I could pick up things that I picked. Because I had quality things that I needed. And at the end of it, I bought, I gave him cash, and I walked away. And he never stopped looking for me. He has come here, when we moved in here, he, was, he came with the wife. I traveled with the first lady the last time we went to Lagos. It was an extraordinary experience in, in, in terms of honor respect. I have few contacts in Lagos. Because of him, I don't need to talk to anybody. 
He's the one calling me to find out my man. Uh, 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 when are you coming? When next are you coming? I want to book ahead because of this economy. Things keep changing. So it's, the, it's, it's not about, I can pick things for as much as I want. He will not ask me money. He will not ask for money. He's ready to give me anything. He knows one day I will pay. But now all that happens is the issue of honor that he places on me. But he didn't honor me the first day and I taught him something. This attitude thing. And he never forgets it. Every time he will remind me of the first day I met him, he will say that my friend that was with me the day you walked in keeps asking about you every time. They never recovered from it. The day you wake up to being aware how you treat people, how you deal with your business, that may be the day your life changes forever. Many people are not aware. Just wanted to give you that as a gift. So please, in your business, those of you who are businesses and people are managing and you are not aware, this week you must be aware. My prayer cannot help you until you are interested in knowing how your business is being run. And if you are doing business from tomorrow, you know, you have to show up early enough when people are still struggling to even rise up in that area. Put your place in order and treat everybody you see like the person you have been waiting for. Let your mind adjust to make everybody you meet a blessing. Don't let anybody walk away from you thinking you, know, you don't need him in business. That's, I think that's, I don't know whether this makes sense. Apply this in any way. And may, if, I don't know, I don't want to apologize for not preaching the word of God. I think this is the word of God you needed to hear. Prosper. Amen. I'm speaking, I say prosper. Amen. I say prosper. Amen. Every opportunity you had lost because of mistakes you made, recover. Amen. Every opportunity you lost because of wrong attitude, recover. Places you were rejected and abandoned because of wrong attitude. Recover. 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 In Jesus' name.